Hello and welcome to another What Sold on eBay video. We're going to go over some of the items sold in our charity shop. All these items were donated, but that doesn't mean that you could not find some of these items out there at garage sales, thrift stores, estate sales, etc., etc. And by the way, if you want to check out our American Cancer Society eBay store, definitely go down there to the link below. We have lots of stuff we would like to uh, blow out some of our items for the end of the year. So if you want to see anything and you want to send us an offer, uh, please do so. So let's get in some of the items that have sold on eBay. Now these are a little bit of older ones that we had because I had a little bit of a backlog on these videos. So some of you might have seen some of these uh, items and some of you have not, but the information is still valid. And uh, like I said, there's lots of great information. So you definitely want to watch to the end of the video. And also if you enjoy these kind of videos, definitely click the like button right now before you proceed and you will be blessed with lots of luck for 2021. So let's get right into it. First up, we have this Christopher Radko ornament now this thing is kind of huge it's kind of large let me see if i could show any size comparison to this i want to say this thing was like 12 inches tall as a christopher radco from 2002 that's what the logo looks like so if you ever see that kind of logo on anything they're kind of like higher end christmas ornaments and we just you know just had christmas and hopefully everyone started listing their ornaments uh you know sometime in october and november so that's a good kind of uh, tip for anyone that has Christmas ornaments. I know a lot of the resellers and a lot of us when we go to estate sales and sometimes you can buy boxes of Hallmark ornaments. And by the way, I'll be doing a video on Hallmark ornaments at some point uh, in the new year. And uh, there's lots of information to, to go off of that. But Christopher Radko is definitely a Bolo brand. If you ever see any of that stuff, definitely buy it. And uh, especially if the price is right, um, some of that stuff goes for pretty good money. This is like kind of a larger piece. So probably retailed for uh, over a hundred dollars originally so but we did take a best offer for 87 on this and I left it in the plastic I did look at it to make sure it wasn't broken because that's another thing too sometimes these little like uh, mercury glass ornaments get you know they could break really easily so I decided not to just take it out because it was pretty much brand new in the box and so uh, this was a pretty good sale and this sold sometime in early November so that's kind of like what I'm saying is you, you need to get um your kind of holidays in line if you're a reseller. Now, if you just, you know, put stuff in your eBay store and just leave it there, that's one thing. But if you cycle through your inventory, you know, you want to kind of do Halloween costumes and, you know, like late summer and Christmas stuff and early kind of fall, you know, kind of like space it out like, you know, three months and uh, you'll do very well with that. Uh, next up, we have this Suspiria. This is a DVD from 2001. Now, the movie came out in 1977, and it is a horror movie. It is a cult classic. I have not seen this movie, and I've seen this uh, DVD come through uh, a few times over the years. So next time this comes through, I'm definitely going to watch it. Um, uh, but this is a, a Bolo brand as far as like um, the Anchor Bay Company. We've talked about horror DVDs in the, the past, and... Uh, I should actually probably start making a list of all these kind of things that I know about. And because I have so many videos that I want to do and uh, horror movies on DVDs, there's like a whole sub niche of stuff that I can talk about uh, with that. But anyway, just know that, you know, if you ever see kind of any obscure horror movies, definitely look them up. Uh, some of them go for big bucks as this is a title that always sells well. Uh, even though, you know, it sold for eleven ninety nine, if you bought this at like a garage sale for a quarter, you know, you're doing you're doing pretty well. Next up we have this uh vintage playing cards from nineteen fifty three. These are from Spain. And uh the reason why I want to talk about this is like there there's sometimes there's a lot of great vintage kind of niche things out there. And one of a kind of like an obscure niche is vintage playing cards from Spain. Um, and I, there's different companies that make them, but sometimes you find these at estate sales mostly. You know, people have old poker sets and poker chips and things like that. So it's just one of the things to look out for if you ever see any vintage uh, cards, playing cards from Spain. Now, they don't sell for crazy money. As you can see here, you know, 60, 80, 20, 30, 40 bucks for a set. If they're brand new, you know, you can get a little bit more for them. 
Uh, but they're very obscure. And sometimes, you know, people sell these at estate sales, not realizing that they're worth something. If you can pick a setup for like five bucks or three bucks or something like that, it would be definitely worth the investment. And it's like just a crazy niche that, you know, I got into a while ago. So I kind of look out for, like, this is one of a thousand things like <laughs> I would look out for if I was in a, at a state sale, but now, you know, so if you ever see vintage playing cards, from Spain, that's one crazy like sub niche of a sub niche. Uh, there you go. Uh, next up, we have this vintage Poly Pocket. This is Wizard of Oz. This this set was like near mint condition. Uh, we did take a best offer for about one hundred and twenty five dollars on this. And what 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 was the selling point of this? Not only that, it was mint condition. The it had the, all the figures. And Poly Pockets sell very well, especially vintage ones, and usually huge collections. And so we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, yeah, so there was a lot of stuff going for this set as far as like it being brand new. Uh, not brand new, but it being in like near mint condition for being a toy that, you know, is meant to be played with. And it all, had all the figures. The little figures are probably not even an inch tall. So those things get lost, chewed up in the vacuum cleaner. Like those things usually are the first things to go. So it's just kind of one of those things to look out for. So let's kind of take a, a little bit of a sidetrack and a deep dive into Poly Pockets on Worth Point here. As you can see, there, there's some crazy collections. Um, usually the collections sell very well, especially if you can find some of the stuff brand new in package. Um, I come across brand new vintage NOS, new old sealed stock at estate sales and garage sales every once in a while. Uh, not like it was before. Before in the 90s and the early 2000s, Poly Pocket stuff you would be able to find like pretty much every garage sale that you would go to, any urban kind of garage sale. But this stuff's kind of dried up, just like video games and things like that. But anyways, it's just something to look out for. And if you don't know, like, oh, well, what the hell is Poly Pocket? It's like these little tiny figures, and they come in these little like little houses that are kind of like little purses and little hearts and little plastic things. They open up and they, they're basically like micro machines. And uh, they came out like, I want to say they came out like right around the time that um, micro machines were out too. So it was like the girls version of micro machines where the boys had the cars and the girls had the little tiny uh, dolls and the play sets and things like that. But anyways, it's something to definitely look out for. And uh, th this stuff has, has gone up in uh, crazy prices over the years. So you want to definitely look out for those. Uh, next up, we have this Mount Vernon spoon. This is a sterling silver spoon. I've talked about uh, spoons before in the past. Sometimes they go by um, their maker's marks, and sometimes the silversmiths will add some value to them. And so, But you definitely want to look, flip them over and look for the word sterling on them. If you ever see any spoons or forks or knives that say sterling anywhere on them, definitely buy them. Now, there is a couple of companies, like there's, I want to say it's like the Sterling & Company there's a couple of companies that say Sterling in the name, so you gotta, gotta you gotta kind of be a little bit careful of that. But uh, I like talking about this kind of stuff because we sold actually a pretty good amount of uh, silverware uh, in 2020, so it's just something to definitely look out for. This spoon, this spoon sold for eighteen dollars. Uh, and silver's heyday too. You know, silver is like a commodity; it's a precious metal, so. Uh, the price of silver goes up and down throughout the months and the years. So you kind of want to pay attention a little bit about that too. You know, if so, you know, silver was at a $50 high in 2011. That would have been a great time to uh, unload a lot of this stuff. Cause this would have been like a, I don't know, like a $75, $80 spoon instead of 18. So sometimes this kind of stuff you want to hold on to till the price is right. And that's a whole other video in itself. But anyways, I always like talking about this stuff, but definitely look out for the word sterling on the underside of these forks and things. Uh, next up, we have this little Suffolk Cottages. These are around the corner Hollywood England set. This sold for $21. These are kind of like um, little kind of lower quality little houses. And sometimes like at garage sales, you'll find this kind of stuff. And sometimes you'll find little salt and pepper shakers that are like this. And uh, usually if you flip them underneath and you look in the bottom, you'll see the information in there. And for these little houses, like usually quality tells a lot about certain prices and stuff so if you ever come across these little houses and they go for you know the, the price is right and they seem like really high quality definitely pick them up because there's definitely like dozens of uh, brands that sell this kind of stuff this is something i probably wouldn't pick up at a garage sale just because of the the quality but anyways this is just i'm just showing you the different kind of things that are out there and what to look out for especially um little little houses and things and those usually sell pretty good in the winter time for whatever reason, people are decorating their homes for autumn and winter and stuff. And this stuff goes with uh, certain decor. So 
definitely look out for that. Uh, next up, we have this vintage 1994 Bandai Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Now, we talked about this kind of stuff in the past. Um, Power Ranger stuff hasn't really kind of, it's kind of, the market's kind of cooled off a little bit over the last five years. Um, it used to be kind of like some of these things used to go for crazy money, but now they really don't. But there are some st stuff for the Power Rangers vintage lines from Bandai. And Bandai is, I want to say it's like a Japanese company. And if you look at, we take a little bit of a deep dive in the worth point, you can see some of the import stuff goes for crazy money. Um, but there are some of the stuff that was released in the United States, like um, like the Megazord, which is kind of like a huge, like, I want to say it's like a huge monster thing. But anyways, you can see a lot of the import stuff from Japanese, from Japan, is the is are the things that are the vintage things that are worth a little more than the U.S. Uh, releases uh, on these particular Bandai things. But anyways, you, you can definitely look out for these. I, I know that there's been lots of sellers on YouTube that come across like Power Ranger collections at, you know, estate sales and garage sales and, and even loose. Um, they don't even have to be vintage, you know, usually like Power Rangers sell through pretty well, especially if you can get the price right. And if you don't know what a Power Ranger is, um, you know, it's definitely these kind of like ninja-y type uh, figures. As we can see here, there's a yellow one, a pink one, a blue one, a black one, a red one, and a green one. And I guess the green one is like... Um, kind of like the the Luke Skywalker of, <laughs> of Power Rangers, though there's fan favorites for every single one of these particular colors. Um, yellow and the pink are uh, traditionally the, the girl rangers, and uh, the blue, black, and um, red and green are traditionally like, uh, you know, male um, type figure actors that plays. And I guess I forgot about the white ranger. There is a white ranger too, so definitely look out for this kind of stuff. It is out there uh, next up we have this george jensen now it's not like george jetson his son alroy his daughter judy and all that stuff from the cartoons it's george jensen the denmark silver smith maker as you can see here we can look at this here uh george jensen he he's a he, he's an old school silversmith now some of this stuff uh he started a company and basically that you know they produce stuff you know in denmark and they produce stuff in the united states and it's pretty old. It's antique stuff usually when you find it, uh, especially the, the stuff that's made in Denmark. And so anyways, I'm just saying like, look out for, if you ever flip something out and it says George Jensen on it, definitely buy it if the price is right, because there are some crazy, crazy prices. I mean, I think we took a best offer for like $185 for this little tiny set that was just like beat up, you know, like look at this, this, you know, they can definitely be cleaned up. That's just the nice thing about silver. If it's not all dented and banged up, uh, you can definitely clean it up. But let's take a little bit of a dip into George Jensen from Denmark, a silversmith, as you can see here, you know, $85,000, $23,000, $19,000. You can see what I'm saying. If you can find these sets. Um, oh, but one thing that you might not know also is he did some jewelry. So the jewelry stuff is actually really rare. And uh, originally he was a sculptor doing ceramics and stumbled across silver, silver making. And then he decided to kind of take his art, art artistic skill and eye and translate it into uh, silversmithing. And so, uh, like I said, if you can come across the sets, you know, some of these things go for crazy, crazy money. So uh, this is going to be the bolo of the video. So George Jetson. Uh, you can definitely remember that name for sure. And there's different, there's definitely different stamps and marks. So if you ever see like the J or the G and the J or something like that, sometimes it's not going to be spelt out George Jetson. It's going to say like a G, it's going to say like a GJ or there's so many different marks over the years. Cause this stuff has been out since uh, like 1903 and before that. So anyways, this is one of those things to look out for. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely go down there, click the like button, uh, subscribe. If you're not subscribed, if you enjoy this kind of stuff and we'll see you next time. Take care.